So, uh, and then, uh, so, so that's kind of what goes into um, all the components going into a, a well cell. So anybody have any questions on that? Pretty straightforward. So um, robot selection, uh, this is pretty much the lineup that, uh, that the Escala Moment has. Um, and then, you know, the first question is usually, uh, these days anyway, industrial or collaborative? Uh, and, and why would I pick one over the other? Um, there's some great things about the collaborative. Um, don't need to put a garden around them if, you know, we can keep them in a collaborative mode. I can have people working right alongside of it, you know, using the same table, manual welding here, robots welding there. Um, it, you can push it up to, um, to, a, to a bigger park uh, or uh, to, uh, you know, and let it, uh, Obviously, you need references and, and all of that, but um, you know, push it up to a part and let it process that. Um, I, you know, again, some of those dull, boring, monotonous or uh, uh, wells that it, you know you don't want to stand there and do all day. Um, so we have so the lineup is um, uh, HC10, HC20, uh, and they uh, they both come with uh, direct feed, so we can do hand guiding with them. Uh, so buttons right here to uh, to allow us to hand guide that robot and teach a point. Um, the other nice thing about them is the same controller uh, as the industrial arms. So if you do have an industrial cell, uh, you know, a, a standard typical weld cell and, uh, and a collaborative cell in the same facility, you got the same interface when you do go to the pendant. Um, the, and you can program those with the traditional teach pendant also. Um, they got the universal uh, weld interface. Uh, and the model man collaboratives are just, uh, they're a little more industrial than most of the other, if not all of the other collaborative robots uh, that are on the market. Uh, they all have their place. I'm not going kind to of down talk them, but uh, these are sturdy, robust robots. And we have an HC10 back there in the corner. so. Um, we can, you want to put hands on that. They can um, set up an industrial mode without PFL and full robot rates or right. full speed, which is, uh, you know, it, um, match is close to matching the, the speeds that the, that the ARs will run. Um, and you can do that, uh, switching them in and out with, uh, with safety devices. So, um, they can switch in and out of that collaborative mode easily. Um, the downfall, uh, I, one thing that I was going to note too is like, so a lot of times, um, we get this, you know, like you want to hand guide that robot to, um, teach, uh, all my positions and things like that. It's an easy way. It's great to get started. That's great for simple joints, uh, simple welds, you know, flat on the table, anything like that. Um, what we tend to see, um, and a lot of people buy that over an industrial just for that reason. And what I've tended to see is like, once they get used to the pendant, uh, which doesn't really take that much, you know, it's like a couple hours with the pendant in your hands, you're pretty comfortable driving. Take one of our training classes, we'll get you jump started. Um, and they end up not touching this, this direct teach anymore. They end up doing everything with the pendant. And when you get into the, you know, the more articulated, but with those joints that are hard to reach or in strange places where you need more articulation, uh, you're going to tend to just go to the pendant anyway. Um, not that you can't do that with direct teach, but it's, uh, it's I guess, once you get comfortable with it. I don't want to hijack your feel, but you know, support that. Prior to HC10s and, and our collaboratives coming into the market, we had an option that you could buy with our robots uh, that allowed you to grab the torch and drive the robot with the weld torch in an industrial arm. So you had to hold the kind of your hand or set up a scenario where you have a push button move. Circles were live, but your hand got to get using a six degree. You guys sold a few of those? We did. I sold a few of those. Yep. Well, my colleagues sold a few of those. Yep. And then two years down the road, they just kind of died. Not because the technology, or not because the hardware died, but a month after that robot system was in the shop and they were hand guiding it, they were using the pendant. Yeah. 
did mean to spend the money on this. It's it's yep. not that difficult. To, we could teach a simple part, just as fast with the venom as we can. The very first one we sold, you know, like I was all for it, right? Because they, were, you know, it was, it was they had a robot well well they're in their facility, but it was an old one. Somebody else had programmed. They're no longer here. Everybody's kind of afraid of it, and so they they bought that kinetic peach, which was that hand guiding. Um, and uh, they we we did a basic training here. The cell got to their floor, and uh, he picked up the pendant and started creating jobs, and uh, then went to Moto Man training for a little more advanced trained for, you know, for a week long course. And uh, he got back and he had a couple jobs programmed and I was out there just helping him, you know, do a couple of things. And um, I said, how, you know, how did the direct, that that direct teach work that kinetic teaching me? He's like, oh, I've never used it. Never even touched it because he just picked up the pendant, you know, that easily and started driving it around. And, at that point in time, I think that was like a $7,500 option. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're spending an extra 7500 bucks yeah. or something. Never. And so, and so then I told that story to the next people that were going to buy it and or that bought it. And uh, they're like, oh, you know, but same thing. I don't want to be, a, um, you know, the, the pendant can be intimidating at first. We want to be able to teach this easily. And same thing. They never used it. So... Uh, so, you know, kind of goes hand in hand here. It, it does. It's a great option to have. And, and there's more reasons to have a collaborative robot than just that direct teach. Um, you know, we can run it in that fenceless environment. Um, and, uh, you know, still still want to have weld screen around it. But, um, we're, you know, it's I don't have to have all that garden. I don't have to, you know, uh, takes up less space than um, all right, so industrial arms. Um, the one of the big things here is that we just have a really large selection. So large selection, uh, everything from 700 millimeter reach. Uh, so um, just for instance, uh, this arm is actually that one right over there uh, with the big uh, snaggle tooth coming off the front. But um, uh, so. The, the GP8 uh, is this eight kilogram, 700 millimeter reach. Um, the 900 millimeter reach would be that same arm just with an extended upper arm. So uh, we got an extension through here, um, drops the payload a little bit, but in a weld environment, we're usually not concerned so much about the payload. Plus we're gonna pick parts up and move them around. Uh, so from there, we got the 1440, um, probably the most popular. Um, and uh, and then uh, the 14th, there's also a, a seven axis option. So this one has an extra axis uh, in this lower arm. Um, I got to use one of those. We, I, we've never done a cell uh, with that robot in it, but I did get to use one uh, at, in Ohio. And it's, uh, I'm surprised we don't sell more of them just because it, it does give you, like you can just lay that arm over. It's just a whole nother, Open, opens up a whole nother realm of like being able to manipulate around a, you know, a part that might have a lot of structure to it that you got a lot of articulation. One um, customer in the territory that uses those and only when needed and the driver of it, I, I don't know. I know what the driver of using that one is. They have three weld robots welding on the same part. Yeah, that's it. You can eliminate the upper arm interference. You can lay it over and get two well, two torches in a very tight space without upper arm interference. But uh, and that's, I mean, Polaris has got a handful of them. But other than that, I, I have not sold another one. Not right. Yep. Um, but you need, anyway. Uh, so the 2010, the 1730, the 2010. Uh, basically, again, about the same arm, just uh, an extended uh, upper arm to uh, get a little more reach. And then the 3124 uh, is it's a monster. I mean, it's, that's a big arm, but um, you can see the gamut. Now, most of these arms, so I say many are purpose built. And when I, I say they're purpose built for welding, you know, these are these ones here, uh, not so much. Everything on that side is a, a, a welding arm. Um, and they're 
streamlined. Um, they have a, a slim profile to them and um, and that uh, symmetrical wrist. So at the wrist portion up here uh, at the front, uh, it's it's pretty symmetrical side to side. Uh, these ones are uh, happen to be that way also, uh, very symmetrical. Uh, and what that does for us, and when I say that, it's like you know, look at that um, kind of that that wide joint uh, where the wrist bend is compared to the collaborative. You know, the collaborative has a big knob sticking off the side. So uh, what what that allows you to do is we can get equal access from either side. You know, equal access to the part from either side without uh, robot obstruction. Um, and uh, and then one of the biggies is that uh, this through hole, and I think I got a slide on that. Um, they are um, linear speeds. Uh, we can achieve the same linear speed on that collaborative robot as we can on this. Um, and um, but like joint speeds in general uh, are going to be faster. I actually I got it. Uh, these are not to scale, but um, this is, you know, I mean, it's it's a pretty good depiction. Uh, these bases are about the same size. This one is a little bit bigger, uh, but we're talking like, I think, 50 millimeters bigger uh, in each dimension. Um, and it's uh, it's just really a large arm. So that through hole we were, I was talking about, that goes uh, through um, the upper arm and through the wrist. And so... Uh, that post pack that comes to the feeder ends up lining up with that through hole, uh, passes through the arm and all the way down through the wrist, and it gives us that torch mounted right on the end of the flange, uh, as opposed to uh, um, as opposed to having this offset torch like this and having to uh, manage that uh, that cable that post pack uh, outside of the arm. Uh, it just makes that uh, post pack management less wear, um, uh, not you know flexing around so much. It's kind of more supportive through there. Um, the uh, uh, it, we've got on these uh, on the AR series, uh, there's a, a dedicated mounting spot for your feeder box, uh, and it's tucked in nice and tight, really compact, um, and it keeps that. It, you know, one of the one of the things you don't realize because you're you're focused on what the robot's doing up in front of you is on that uh, that back elbow on the top of that upper arm, uh, how much obtrusion that can have um, throughout your you know in your in your cell. Like you need to have room for you know you need to have a good amount of room behind the robot also. Um, and then uh, just to kind of talk about that uh, faster speeds. Um, you can see here, this is uh, this is the HC10 compared to the Arrow T40. Um, and so just um, each joint of that 14, four of those industrial arms, and this kind of holds true throughout that whole um, that whole industrial arm lineup. Um, the, the joint speeds that we can achieve on each joint um, is just higher. Um, gives us a little faster XL, D cell, things like that. So um, the, the the advantage that the HD10 does have is we do have a, a larger range of motion, um, and that's because we do have those offset joints. So um, pro and con, you know, that offset joint uh, might allow, might not allow us, uh, um, we might have some obstruction getting into tight spaces, but, um, you know, we also have more uh, articulation with each one. 